I'm sorry about this folks, I haven't forgotten about the Concorde 2, I can assure you. But the Concorde 2 came off the bench for a small while for a small hi-fi amplifier of mine in the bedroom that broke down due to a capacitor and a fuse. <laughs> and uh, and uh, looking through the Cybernets to do I come across the uh, Lafayette 1200 there that you might have seen in one of the piles and uh, I can remember saying there that it's got a few issues well it has, it's been e prompted by uh, someone I know I won't mention him on the video but I know a lad that's done that now radio does look a little bit untidyish in its PA strip like it's had uh, some changes but it's 30 30 odd year old 35 year old folks is this it's a an original uh, Lafayette 1200 uh, with the the best board of all i.e. the 5.9 cox in my opinion anyway it's had uh, UK FM pitted here uh, for those that don't know and it because of the binary changes and because UK FM is mixed up in between two bands here in England i.e. I band and Super I uh, it, it's easier to do that to work out binary output channel numbers anyway you can see clearly it's got some readout issues but watch I'm injecting uh, 565 in there roughly 565 roughly uh, high band You can see unit part at readout don't work. <laughs> well that's not really the issue really folks. The issue is that it's not moving anywhere. Now I did uh, get it to transmit a minute ago, it just woke up into TX. But it's the first time it's ever done that. not producing any TX on meters here uh, i.e. on bill here mm. but it did do a minute ago I'm telling you anyway so I don't know what I'm going to uh, I'll have a look at PLL circuitry and see what's going on there ok folks I've done some checks with uh, Sean's meter just looking at binary inputs and basically all I've been doing is uh, looking for our reference signals and everything which there must be there for us to a receiver because receiver uses 10 to 40 megs so reference must be there now uh, binary from the selector going into the prom is all there and changing binary is coming out of the prom uh, the lock detector is high and the VDD is high uh, and uh, v VCO looks like it's been changed before that might have been me, I might have done that in the first assessment I've had with this and realise it's in deeper now I'm blaming the PLL in this case I think that prom is working correct and I blame the PLL so I'm going to get another one in there as quick as that, I'm not no messing about here <laughs> you forget to pick the camera up anyway, uh, just fitting the uh, the second handed PLL synthesizer in there that I believe works and uh, I forgot to mention that this is a must after you check after you check that the uh, VCO mixer is working as well as all the voltages before you go to this trouble okay uh, this is a must before you go to that trouble hey folks I'm just soldering in the third lot loop synthesizer now normally on this model uh, it's a good idea to remove the LED driver board here but uh, you know you can get away with <laughs> tucking it in down there but it's always a bit of a problem because you know you can't get to it vertically so you have to come in at an angle anyway that one I normally get them in right fast I've just give it a bit of a clean up here but normally uh, excuse me 
you can see program uh, lines where they've had to cut there to get uh, binary directing these at binary wires here you know which I'll have to put back otherwise prom won't work you see <clears throat> and you can see uh, how they've taken control of uh, one of the pins here look can you see it pin 9 is it I think and uh, it's to give it an higher binary count anyway but what was what funny I couldn't get it in the bloody article right and uh, what it turned out to be is the synthesizer should normally go in all of them holes there and all of these holes here and I put it all in these it, that's just the way it went in <laughs> as, I, as I'm uh, carefully prodding it and persuading it it, <laughs> it went in like that should have gone in really like that I thought it was a bloody swine and oh but hey it's alright I can get it like that as long as pins have been contact well enough <laughs> well, you'll have to excuse me, folks, but I am on one nine, <laughs> and I'm receiving and transmitting now again. Uh, I'm now dialing one eight five in at ten microvolt in amplitude AM, and uh, I'm up and rolling. I can tell there that. That's channel 40, and I need a VCO coming in to capture. That's channel 20, of course. And when I go TX, I'm in FM now, yeah, I'm in AM. Uh, there at uh, 3 watts at 1849 3 watts and if I change band hang on uh, this is high band you're a bit low on TX aren't you lass that's next band whatever you are I'm sure I saw you a minute ago doing load the power I did is it just on UK FM I saw you doing all the power? Yeah, you do more on there, don't you? Just a bit more. 3.9 on uh, 781, because it's EEPROM, you see. So that's proving that the EEPROM is working. 277815 at 4.2 watts. Right, so all you got to do is switch that to FM. Ah, so let's inject, uh, let's inject 27, uh, let's inject FM into it, uh, oh, wrong button coming out, I'll just set it up for FM, okay, that's one nine, <laughs> bit, bit high on microvolt, but, uh, I've had a little glimpse at receiver, receiver seemed excellent, point one of a microvolt, I, I think I can just hear it there. Yeah, I thought that on mid band I thought it would do better than that. My own ears could hear it about point point two hundred. Well that's on uh, UK FM seven eight one. It would be reading one nine. Well that's good folks. That um I thought that could be uh in an harder situation than what it was really. But I can't really help it. We've cut into it binary, you see. So there's not a lot I can do really there. There's not a lot I can do there, folks, really. And I mean, this is all working. Quite tidy. Regulators, you know, soldered back here. Keeping it well cold, of course. It's flat cold. It, it can do, you see, on the 7805, that's ground. Uh, this pad is, is is electrically ground always, so he's allowed to do that. Just wants to tidy up there, that's all in there, doesn't it? Yes, I'm happy with that. I'll have to put front off and sort of read out, out of course, but that's no bother. You could talk to someone on that. Anyway, uh, I best uh, get back on with my Concord soon. Uh, 
I see there's a little bit of interest about two or three here. <laughs> Look where they've had to cut through these. So you see, for me, this radio with him cutting it like that, like I say, if the EEPROM's reasonably tidy, I'll leave it in. I'm not. I'm not so bothered. That that's quite rigid. That's not going anywhere. It's well soldered up to grounds and what have you all over the place. You know, it's well mounted. Uh, this is uh, moving frequency to get to one two five, uh, so that we can get to one two five on end uh, other than a five. You know, because otherwise our channels on this would be with a five. So. I thought this was in a much worse state actually when I saw that I thought oh bloody hell and it is a bit untidy but uh, I don't I don't think it'll be working right that to be honest I'm not just not so happy with that life but anyway uh, that would another real cheapy with that folks that's a 5.9 Cox I've had it ages I've had it absolutely ages but it's the first time I've decided you know Messing around with cybernets, it gets you in mood for them. Uh, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to be frightened of them BCOs. I'll, I'll have to set set all of this radio up front to back. I'm not sure whether I did change that BCO as a test or not. Uh, but in a case like that, it can it can always be. You know, they are a bit confusing. I grant you to fault find, but the v, in this model, BCO block. PLL synthesizer, VCO mixer, binary input, and signals, you know, and, and, and voltages. And if all the voltages and the signals are all present and, the, and around the PLL mixer, everything doesn't move, everything's present, but it won't move when you move selector around. You've got changing binary, because in that case I had, I'd even got ch changing binary binary at the EEPROM and the outputs of the EEPROM to the program input pins. So it would obviously had to be, it had to be, uh, it had to be Tony there. Poor Tony. PLL 20A. Oh, 20A. No, but this is a marvellous idea, marvellous chip, you know, this. This chip, folks, is, uh, is, oh, it's, it was just fantastic with this. This really, uh, if you if you were to look up the programming ability of this animal, you know, when it comes to binary weights, you know, it's uh, it's only a little fella. It's only a little fella, but this is a very versatile animal. You can really make this go anywhere. But we're going to have to send that to the bin because it's it's no good to anybody now. It's not going to synthesize any frequencies for us no more. So, uh, I'll, uh, I'll have to put this on pile now for a setup, folks. But uh, I'll get back on with my Concord when I do. Um, it's here, it's here. <laughs> I'll get, I'm, I'm happy with that. Because that, that was as fast as it took to... Uh, it literally took... I don't know. Half an hour happened. That's excellent. Where is that signal meter? <coughs> it's right to the end of the box, look. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Money it will be with bloody um, uh, 100 microvolt in. Put 10 in. Yeah, that's lovely. Is that old pal? Hey! Welcome to the Cobra Mans. One of your screw, Two of your screws are missing. Oh, I'm not having that. I want my money back. Catch you later, folks. I'm just about to go, folks. Sorry about that. I'm just about to go, right? And, uh, I'm just about to turn it all off. And I press TX. And I see it's doing a lot more current now. And, of course, it's doing a lot more carrier. 7.7.1 7 .1 amp touch to ping, folks. Slightly altered in frequency. It's gone down a little bit. And it's at 7.1 watt. So, and join 2.2, whoa, 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 what's going on? Eh? So its power's increased, that's why it's drawing more current. Its RF output power, for whatever reason, is increased, but it could be because it wants to set up. It, it, it probably is, uh, it, you know, uh, a lot of radios that I get, they tend to, uh, people's have a go at fixing them. That's another thing I find fascinating about CB repairs is that um, there's damage on the way 
you haven't just got to fix the faults that are uh, wrong with the radio, you've got to fix the faults that other people may have done. In, in this now, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this ground link in here. There's several of them on the front panel, look if you look. And they're just to ground uh, this front panel which is dealing with ECO signals and what have you and uh, you know and all that lot, you know. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll just lift one end of that up, chuck that underneath it and then solder it back across to hold that down, you know. Ah. And then uh, I'll put it on the pile press setup anyway. May the force be with you. Mm.